Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, it's myself Alan and today we're going to have a look at MIDI modifiers. If it's your first time coming to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like what you see, everything on my channel is about Cubase because that's the DAW that I use. So we're going to jump right in. This is MIDI modifiers and you'll find them over here on the left zone. If you go over here, click on MIDI inserts and you'll see a drop down menu here. If you click on that, you will see down here the MIDI modifiers. This is one location you can find them. You'll also find in here the uh, Apache 5 and you'll also find the Beat Designer and you'll also find the Step Designer. And if you're interested, I have already made videos on them on uh, my channel. So you can pop along and have a look at them. But uh, we're going to go back out of this. And we're going to go down to the one below it. And we're going to click on this one. And this is the one I'm going to show you today. This is also MIDI modifiers. It's just like I said, it's in two different places. So uh, we're going to have a look at this. I just have a piano part here that I recorded earlier and it's just in the key of C. Um, the first thing we're going to have a look at is the presets. It depends on which version of Cubase you have. Um, there could be more presets in a higher version. If I just click on presets, and you can see here we have uh, less velocity, more velocity, uh, random velocity and positions. There's loads of these that you can uh, click on and you can try out. Um, but we'll go back to that later on in the tutorial. Um, but the first thing we're going to look at today is the transpose. And this lets you transpose your MIDI parts. Um, so if I have this in a key of C and I want to transpose it up to a key of D, I can just click here and go up uh, two and it'll transpose it to a key of D. Um, but the good thing about this is when you're using it and you do transpose, your MIDI information doesn't change. So it'll still say exactly the same and it'll look exactly the same. It doesn't change the MIDI, um, it, but it will change the sound and let you hear it. But um, you can just go back to it, but it won't change it until you actually commit to it. And I'll show you later on how you can actually go and commit to it and you can freeze it and to actually change the whole MIDI. But it's a great way of, um, instead of going in and having to uh, change all the MIDI parts, you can test it out this way. And that's the good thing about this. So you'll hear this now if I play it in a C. Now if I transpose it up to a D, And you can get really wild with it and bring it up as high as you want. And just bring it back to a C. But remember, the MIDI information doesn't change. So uh, it'll stay intact. But it will let you listen to what it will sound like if you have got it changed. The next thing we're going to have a look at is the velocity shift, which is uh, just below it. The velocity shift, as you can see, I have the velocities here, and um, they're all the same. If you record a part and it's uh, the velocity is very low on it, you can higher it up or you can lower it down. And I'll just play and let you hear it. So you can bring the velocity right down, bring them all down. And as you can see here, it doesn't actually change. But it'll save you time having to go in and change it all. And then realize that you didn't particularly like it. So you have to go and change it all back. And that's the great thing about MIDI modifiers. And like, I'll let you hear what it will sound like. So that's uh, the transpose and the velocity shift. 
The next thing we're going to have a look at is the velocity compressor. As you can see, this is set to 100%. I have a MIDI part here, and as you can see, I've deliberately um, put the volume up, uh, the velocity on certain pieces of it. So the volume will jump up. If I let you listen to it, you'll hear it. So you get high peaks. Um, but what I want to do is to try level off all these, and I can do that very easy with this. As you can hear now, it's being compressed, so it gives you a more even sound. And it comes in very handy. The next thing we're going to look at is the length compressor. And as you can see here, it starts off on 100%. And if I bring it down, it'll shorten the length of the notes. And I'll just play, I have a bass note here. and. Um, it's just a C bass, and I'm going to change it. As I bring it down, it gets shorter. This is very good if you're working with arpeggios and stuff like that. And you have to remember that it doesn't actually change the MIDI until you actually commit to it later on. So you can chop and change and you can you can use it to experiment to hear what your piece would sound like and um, without having to go through all the hassle of going in and change it and then having to change it all back. So it makes it quick and easy to do and um, you can you can really play around with it and get some good stuff. And you can work the opposite way and make it longer. And you get good results doing this. So that's the length um, compressor. The next thing on the list we're going to have a look at is random. And as you can see, there's random one and there is a random two. Um, I have it, if you go into the drop down menu, it has off, it has position. This will random the note positions, which comes in really handy because it helps your performance to sound like it's being played by a real person. And the same, you can do pitch, you can do the velocity, and you can do the length. Um, Press play. That's the maximum velocity. It'll go up 82%. And you can also set the minimum and that will randomize your velocities and it'll make it sound like it's being played by a person rather than being played or um, rolled in as MIDI notes. Here again in random um, I'm going to just try um this time i'm going to just do the pitch and i can uh, set the pitch i can do the highest pitch uh, maximum volume that i want or maximum value that i want and i can also do the minimum value and these slight variations um, make interesting sounds but same again you're not committed to this. It's only letting you listen to what it can sound like. And at the end of it, I'm going to show you how you can um, change it completely. 
so we'll just have to mess around with this. So you can experiment with it and you can get some uh, very unusual sounds. Um, so that's uh, using the pitch. Like I said, if you click in, you can use position, pitch, velocity or length. And then it also has a second one. The next thing we have is the range target, which is the same. Um, if I click in, it has a drop down menu and you can set the targets. You can set the maximum target and uh, the minimum value that you want and um, and you can do that same twice so that comes in handy as well and um, now i'm going to show you and um, i'm going to leave this um set to the sound we had it on as you can see our midi has not changed it's still exactly the same and I'm going to show you that if you want to commit and I want to change this, I'll show you how you can do that. So how do we go about committing um, to changing our MIDI? Um, well, the first thing I like to do at this, before I do that is I'm going to go in and I'm going to duplicate this track. So that will keep me another copy of it in case I ever decide that um, I want to go back. Okay, so this is the one we're working with. At the moment, we're gonna go into this, uh, have a look at the presets. If I just press play, I'm gonna mess around with some of these presets. Okay, so if I want to commit to this and I want to change this, remember I have just kept another copy of it just in case um, on the safe side because once you change it, you won't be able to go back. Um, if I highlight it, I go up to uh, the drop down menu where MIDI is. I go down to freeze MIDI modifiers and I freeze it. And now that is done. If I press play, as you can see, um, everything has gone back to zero. I press play. And that's our new version. But then we also have our original version. So it's always good to keep a copy. So that's a quick look at the MIDI modifiers in Cubase 13 and I hope uh, that it comes in handy to you. It's well worth uh, messing around with it and checking it out. It's very good and you can get some good results from it. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and help me grow the channel. Also, um, if you like the video, give me a big thumbs up like and if you hit the notification, you'll be notified when the next video comes out. And uh, if there's anything you want to know about in Cubase or any further information that I can help you with, with the MIDI modifiers or anything else in Cubase or anything you'd like to see a video made on, um, leave me a comment below. Or if you just like the video, you want to leave me a comment to myself, Alan, over here in the Republic of Ireland, I'd be only too happy 
to help you out and to hear from you or you can just drop me a comment to say hello until the next video look after yourself take care and don't forget all my videos are about cubase so for myself alan all the best take care